Exposing Harmful Supplements, Biotin's Dark Side, and the dark side of several other nutrients. This is how to use a simple home measurement to expose the harmful effects of a supplement before they ever happen. In January of this year, having finished my self-experiments in the biochemically unoptimized state, based on the rationale outlined in getting to the bottom of my health, biotin, and VLCAD, two articles, videos, podcasts that I've made last year, I started phase one of my biochemical optimization experiments with 10 milligrams loading dose of biotin per day. Five weeks into this, I developed clumsiness, short-term memory loss, and a quick temper. Several times a day, I would experience an unusual degree of clumsiness. For example, I'd be holding my phone and I wouldn't even be moving it and it would fly right out of my hand when I was doing nothing but holding it. And several times I'd walk into a room and then completely forget why I'd walked in there. And in one event, I screamed at someone I loved for something completely trivial and screamed so loud that I saw flashing yellow lights spinning around me. You could call it stars, but it wasn't five-pointed stars. It was flashing yellow lights. And I assume that was from a sudden massive rise in blood pressure. That's never happened to me before outside of exertional stress. So the first time it ever happened to me when I was when I was deadlifting heavyweight in my early 20s. Never had it happened because I got angry. So I also, and it's never happened again since then. Now, I went back recently into my notes from that time and I saw that I also had written down that it seemed like I was developing the beginnings of a gait abnormality, meaning an abnormality in how I walked, but it was hard for me to distinguish between that and whether my hips were just too tight. However, that also betrays another problem, which is that the whole time I was thinking that the biotin was making my muscle tension worse, but I couldn't really tell because I was coming up with other excuses for the muscle tension. Like I was like, well, I was kind of slacking on my PT exercises last week and et cetera, et cetera. But now it's become very clear to me that my muscle tension has an extraordinarily important metabolic component. And when I look back on those notes, I see, yes, I don't know if I was developing a gait abnormality, but it's definitely the case that my hips were getting tighter because I was worsening my, meta- I was metabolically unoptimizing myself. Now, keep in mind that I intended these as experiments so that I could learn from them to help, to gather insights that can help you guys. And that was a success. That was a success. So, I did have a leading indicator of this. I'm going to share what that leading indicator was, but I wanted to know what this would end up like at the end of the five weeks experiment. I also wanted to run comprehensive lab data and I did run comprehensive lab data and I will be sharing that data in a much more extensive article, podcast, video, et cetera, later in the year as I publish my experiment, so to speak. But right now I just want to share what one of the key leading indicators was. And I'm glad that I went, that I carried this through to the end because I learned a lot from it that I think can help other people. So what happened? Well, an early clue was that my waking resting lactate was increasing. My average waking lactate had been 0.6 millimoles per liter, but biotin nearly doubled it. It brought it from 0.6 to 1.1 millimoles per liter and led to numerous days where it was considerably higher, including 2.0 millimoles per liter on the very last day of the high dose, which was the day that I ran my comprehensive post biotin lab work. When I stopped the problem, or when I stopped the biotin rather, the problems went away and my lactate returned back to normal. So this is actually very easy to explain when you use a biochemistry perspective. So first thing that we should understand is that energy metabolism can be broadly conceived as a two-step process. Step one is the catabolic breakdown of carbs, fat, and protein to extract energy in the form of electrons. And step two is the translation of that energy into ATP using oxygen. Biotin contributes to step one in multiple ways, but does nothing to step two. If step two is compromised more than step one, biotin, thiamine, or any other nutrient that contributes to step one without contributing to step two, the other main nutrients are B6 and manganese, will be detrimental to one's energy metabolism. Lactate rises when step one exceeds step two, so waking fasting lactate is an excellent leading indicator of the health problems that could result from aggravating an imbalance between step one and step two. Consistent with this, 
More recently, I tried thiamine, which falls into the same category. I used 125 milligrams of thiamine from a capsule of Life Extensions benfothiamine with thiamine. It's 100 milligrams of benfothiamine with 25 milligrams of thiamine hydrochloride. And I split it up into four capsules that I took throughout the day. So that I took one capsule in total by the end of the day. And that brought my waking lactate the next day to 1.7 millimoles per liter. It had been under one before that, which is healthy. I cut it down, the dose of, of thiamine, down to 25 milligrams, meaning I, I split using a milligram scale one capsule into five capsules and took only one of those resulting capsules, meaning one fifth of the normal dose. And I took it with breakfast. So it was into my system 24 hours before my next waking fasting lactate measurement almost. And the next day, my lactate was 2.5 millimoles per liter. And so I was like, clearly, even a fifth of this capsule is too much thiamine for me. My lactate went back to normal after I ditched the thiamine, and I never got any problems from it. Why? Because I used the information from my first experiment that lactate is an indi- is a leading indicator of a supplement that in- that contributes to step one of energy metabolism without improving step two metabolism, causing step two to be overstressed. And I averted the neurological problems that I'm quite sure thiamine would have pres- would have caused me had I kept it up because I'm, I think it's, can't prove it, but I think it's obvious from a biochemical perspective that these neurological effects are, you know, look up the neurological effects of a respiratory chain disorder and co- and compare them to having a moderately impaired respiratory chain with a with something that's overburdening it layered on top of course you're going to develop the same problems so am i the only person that this happened to i seriously doubt it i know that in the may 2023 masterpass q and a session i mentioned that this happened and one of the members whose primary issue is now known to be a complex three disorder in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, said that they believe the same thing happened to them on eight milligrams of bi- biotin per day. Um, you know, And so I was talking to a room of 13 people and one of them said that happened to me. So I really don't think this is that rare. In my case, one s- set of mutations to rule them all is two rare mutations in ACAD9, which is a riboflavin dependent gene needed for fatty acid oxidation, which is a component of step one, and for the proper assembly of complex one of the mitochondrial respiratory chain, which is a component of step two. So this, I know the mutations that limit my mitochondrial respiratory chain. I know the fix for them, and I'm doing that right now. But at this time, I was focusing on something that aggravated that problem and actually unmasked the problem and made it fully manifest because it put maximal stress on the limiting factor. And, you know, someone can shoot back and say, well, that's a rare problem. And I'm going to shoot back and say, collectively, rare problems are What's their prevalence? 100%. So go see my super unlock video for the data showing that rare problems have a prevalence of 100%. Okay. Biotin overactivated different parts of step one, such as the oxidation of certain amino acids, fatty acids, and the use of carbohydrate to fuel the citric acid cycle, but did nothing to help step two. So it caused lactate to go up and it caused the neurolog- neurological problems to ensue. Thiamine likely did the same thing by promoting the use of carbohydrate to fuel the citric acid cycle and doing nothing to help step two. I didn't get any neurological side effects from thiamine because I stopped taking it because I was testing my lactate and I saw it exploding. And so I cut it out and my lactate went back to normal. The people who do develop neurological effects from thiamine are almost certainly blaming on some completely other things like paradoxes. But If they were measuring their lactate, they would have caught the problems before they ever happened. I now strongly believe that measuring glucose ketones and lactate simultaneously should be the centerpiece of dealing with any metabolic issue in terms of home testing and that measuring glucose continuously without measuring ketones and lactate is really dumb and should absolutely be done when trialing super physiological doses of any vitamins or minerals. Lactate in particular seems to be the most useful indicator of an imbalance Resting lactate should be 0.5 to 1.5 millimoles per liter, but it's the bottom half of that range that is healthy for a fasting measurement. And when you eat meals, it should increase, but it should stay within that normal range 
So an hour or two after your meal, it still shouldn't be rising above 1.5 millimoles per liter. And it should go back down after that. And when you wake up again, it should be below one. Especially when the meals contain carbohydrate, they're going to raise your lactate. But even if it's a high carbohydrate meal, your lactate should not be going above 1.5 millimoles per liter even after the meal. Uh, the exception is the day after you consumed a lot of alcohol, you might see your lactate rise above that, and that's fairly normal. And then, of course, when you're exercising, your lactate can go up based on intensity and can go way higher than those measurements. These are for resting measurements. Increase of waking lactate above 1.0 or postprandial lactate above 1.5 or any major increase in lactate, even within the normal range, in response to supplementation, because remember... My lactate went from 0.6 to 1.1. That's almost doubling, but it's well within the normal range, right? So it's not about being out of the normal range. It's about the increase. It's not about the concentrations per se necessarily. It's about the trend and how they change in response to things. This is true of all lab work. Okay, those things should be seen as leading indicators of metabolic impairments caused by the supplementation. I use a Nova Biomedical Lactate Plus to test my lactate. Prime candidates for supplements that could raise lactate in this manner are thiamine, B6, biotin, and perhaps manganese. Now note, what's the one of the central signs of thiamine deficiency is lactate that goes up. There's nothing weird about the fact that thiamine can make your lactate go up even though thiamine deficiency makes your lactate go up because everyone has an idiosyncratic component to their energy metabolism driven by the fact that everyone has rare things that alter it the prevalence of rare things is 100%. Go see my Super Unlock video for more on that. Okay, now this is not a complete list because the fact that nearly everyone, you know, I say everyone, but maybe the woman who's 124 years old living on bacon, grease, and cigarettes might be an exception to this rule, but the data say that everyone has several highly idiosyncratic bottlenecks in energy metabolism. And that means that some supplements like riboflavin that could be generally supportive of step two in most people will disproportionately or even exclusively support step one in other people. So there are no hard and fast rules. It's just that thiamine, B6, biotin, and perhaps manganese are at the top of the list for candidates for which this could happen. There are 297 independent genetic impairments in step two, many essential nutrients that are relevant, and many toxins that impair it. There are no general rules for what helps it. There are rather a great many things that can help some and hurt others. These will be the subjects of future articles, future videos, and future podcasts. If you want first dibs on my information as it comes out in this series that I'll be unraveling, you should see the link in the description and go subscribe to my newsletter so you get emailed as soon as these articles come out as they take some time to get turned into videos. Now, for now, the point is that if you are supplementing with something that is overburdening such an impairment, you don't need to know what the impairment is to apply some common sense. Look at the rising lactate because your common biochemical sense that you've learned from me has made you test your lactate before you start megadosing things. And you see the rising lactate and you either cut back on the supplement or you cut it out entirely before you see some type of harm sets in. That means that you can use lactate as a leading indicator in order to stop the supplement from causing problems before it ever does. A skeptic may say, then how do you know it was going to cause a problem? And your answer can be, who cares? It prob you know, my leading indicator said it was, and I avoided the risk. Okay. As I described in why you need this supplement on a high protein diet and why high dose biotin could be the answer for your blood sugar, brains, and beauty, most people need more biotin than, than they get. And about one in 30 people need a milligram doses per day, sometimes more than a one milligram, five, 10 or more. So it's not a warning that biotin is bad for you, even at high doses. Rather, if you want to know whether a supplement is doing good or doing harm, one excellent tool in your kit should be to test your waking fasting lactate. Remember, I'm going to be talking more about what you can do to support step two because there are hundreds of different problems in that. And if you want first dibs on that information, go see the link in the description and subscribe to my newsletter.